Hey guys, this is Angelo and today I'm going to show you how to make bone broth. And bone broth is something that's really healthy and has a ton of health benefits. And it can help you with your digestive system. So I personally had the gastritis, which is an inflammation of the stomach lining. And it can help you if you have uh, things like leaky gut, which I had to fight with a couple of years. And which is a intestinal permeability issue um, that can cause system-wide inflammation throughout your whole body. And it helps with your skin, with your hair, with your nails, um, and it helps your bones. It has a ton of health benefits and it's something that you should definitely include in your diet. It can also help you with on your ketogenic diet because it also contains a lot of minerals. And all right, so what I usually do is, uh, what I also recommend you to do is buy the healthiest possible bones you can. So buy bones from grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb, or from um, organic pasture-raised chickens and pork and mix those. You can mix those together to add some nice flavor. And what I really like to do is I usually mix 50% grass-fed beef bones with 50% um, organic chicken bones because they, the chicken bones add a really nice flavor as well and it smells really nice. And um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put them in the oven for uh, approximately 20 minutes on I think 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like 175 degrees uh, Celsius. And usually when I buy beef bones and uh, chicken bones, organic chicken bones, I usually mix them together in small bags. Like I use like, uh, this is a two pound bag. So I use like one pound of chicken bag, uh, chicken bones and ligaments and one pound of beef bones and so I put them like this in the freezer so I always have one sort of um, bone batch ready to make some more bone broth and yeah put them in the freezer in these little bags and now I'm gonna put them in this little baking tray and put them in the oven for 20 minutes I'm sorry vegans in advance might look a little disgusting but it tastes amazing and it's a great way to use the whole animal not to waste anything I just want to make sure to use healthy bones from healthy animals because to get the most nutritional value out of it and something we also do when we eat chicken or something we also keep the bones and we add those to the bone broth as well So put all those in here. So now I'm gonna put this in the oven for 20 minutes on 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. And you don't have to roast the bones beforehand, but I do think it adds a nice extra flavor, like roasted flavor, especially the beef bones. If you were to do only beef bones, then I definitely recommend roasting them a little bit because it really adds a nice little taste. So it makes them a little bit tastier. All right. So the bones are ready, I just got them out of the oven, I left them in for 20 minutes and I wouldn't leave them much longer because otherwise you risk oxidizing the fats and destroying some of the some of the nutrients in them and this way you just add a little bit of roasted flavor without destroying anything. And now I'm gonna add this, put this into the slow cooker. So this smells really good already and now I'm gonna add um, three to four tablespoons of uh, apple cider vinegar which is gonna help uh, extract all the minerals and uh, amino acids and all the nutrients out of the bones and uh, so I added before and then I cover it with some hot water not quite at the boiling level but just wanna cover it all Leave a tiny bit of space in the slow cooker. Close it up. And keep it on low for approximately 24 hours. Can go as high as 48 hours as well, but I, for 
If you would do just beef bones, then you can go as high as 48 hours, but if you mix beef bones and chicken bones, 24 hours is more than enough. And chicken bones are usually thinner, so they don't need quite as much time. They're gonna break up quite nicely. And yeah, it's a great way to make some really, really nourishing bone broth that both me and my girlfriend really, really enjoy. Also when we're fasting, it's a great little sort of snack or something to have, something to, to sip on, some warm, nice, tasty, satisfying drink. And uh, yeah, see you in 24 hours. Approximately 24 hours have passed and the broth is ready. The apartment already smells really nice. And now it's time to take it out. And now I'm gonna separate the bones. This is what it looks like when it's done. I'm gonna separate the bones and the meat from the broth itself. And to do that, I'm gonna use a French press, actually the same French press that I use for my for my coffee, um, because I found that it separates it really nicely. So you get all the particles that you might have in the bones. You can you can separate them well from the fluid. And then I'm gonna pour that in some glass containers and surround that with some cold water to cool it off. Here's a separated broth which I filtered through a French press and I put in some glass containers that I have from IKEA and surrounded them with some cold water in order to cool it off as quickly as possible and so I can put it in the fridge. And obviously you can have some right away if you want to, um, but in this case I decided I'm gonna have some later on because I was already full. And here you have the bones and there's actually quite a bit of meat on there so if you want you can eat it as well. And that's what that looks like. So yeah, I'm not gonna wait till it cools off and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge. Here's the bone broth after it's spent a couple of hours in the fridge and I'm still amazed like a little kid whenever I see how it turns into sort of like a pudding and because of the gelatin it gets extracted from the bones and also it's a really easy way to separate the fat as well. It stays on top and you can remove easily or you can use that for cooking or whatever you want to do. You can keep it in as well. And I like to add some turmeric like one quarter tablespoon for some extra anti-inflammatory effects. And then what I usually add as well is some chicken bouillon, which I add in organic powdered form, which I found. Or you can also add like half a bouillon cube for some really nice added sodium, which cannot hurt on a ketogenic diet. And just make sure it's low carb and it only has some spices inside and no added crap. And that's a really, really great way to up your electrolyte intake as well. And here's the finished cup that I'm going to enjoy now. Before you go, let me know if you also like to make bone broth from time to time. And if you're making it for the first time, let me know how it goes. And don't forget to leave me a like and to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Bye.